We're covering the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to look just briefly at uh, some of the characters today as we consider this subject title, Living by Faith in the Unforeseen 2013 in Spite of Others. Amen. Living by Faith in the Unforeseen 2013 in Spite of Others. If you have lived the Christian life for uh, any length of time, you know that oftentimes it might be in spite of others. Amen. And uh, oftentimes we need to go on on in, in spite of others coming along with us. That's why we sang the song, uh, though none go with me, still I will follow. Uh, no turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to read responsively. That means I read uh, the odd verses. You read the even verses with me, and we'll conclude with verse number 8. Everybody at uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 say amen. Amen. Any o me's. Everybody sounds like they're awake today. Amen. I don't think anybody left, Brother White, except the children. Amen. So praise God for that. All right, I'll read verse 1. You read the even verses with me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found. Because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. Living by faith in the unforeseen 2013 in spite of of others. As we go through chapter 11 of Hebrews throughout the year, it's going to be quite evident that many of the heroes of faith had to live so in spite of others. I'm sure Abel did in spite of Cain here that we see in uh, the early verses here. I'm sure Enoch did in order to please God. I'm sure Noah did in order to prepare the ark. And I'm sure Abraham uh, did in order to go out into a place and so on we could go. And so will we. Amen. If they had to live by faith in spite of people, you will and I will as well. No wonder the author of Hebrews had to say in chapter 12 and verse 1 these words. Look over there if you can. I'm sorry, verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. It's, it's uh, kind of fitting that the author would say, you know what? In spite of other people, what you're going to have to do is look to Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. He said, we're compassed about with these witnesses. Yes, but you know what? In spite of people, I'm going to look unto Jesus. Why? He's the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus went on in spite of others, leaving us the example. 
that you and I can as well. This was encouraging for the groups that we talked about, the saved Jews who were suffering. It was encouraging for them to know to look unto Jesus. It was inviting to the Jews that were professing and not really possessing Christ uh, to carry on and look to Jesus. And it should have been convincing to the Jews that weren't convinced that Jesus was their Messiah and they need to look to Jesus Amen. in spite of others. You know, people are going to let you down. People will fail you. Some of the people that are with you today might not always be with you, but Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So when it's all said and done, I, I need to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. Today we're going to look briefly at Enoch, Noah, and Abraham living by faith in spite of others. Look at their lives, see what we can glean and trust to be a blessing to you in the unforeseen 2013. Because not everybody that's serving God with you right now will be serving God with you at the end of this year. Amen. Somebody may get left behind. Yes, and you want to serve God in spite of others. Father, work in us. Work through us today that we might see the mighty power of God to work through the Holy Spirit. Lord, these heroes of faith didn't get that way by living by sight. They got that way by living by faith in spite of others. And God, as we look at their lives, help us to see our own lives. Things that we might need to shore up on. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord, you're the Alpha, the Omega. Yes. Lord, many I know that are here that are endeavoring to live by faith. They're striving to reach out and go and do what you have asked them to do by faith. Lord, in spite of others, they may have to carry on in the remainder of this month. Uh, maybe the remainder of the year. They may have to carry on in spite of others. God, help us to see what these biblical characters did that we can do as well. And help us to live in spite of others. Lord, we can't do that unless we have a personal faith and a personal God. And a personal relationship with him. Press upon our hearts today the need to have that relationship, to have that walk with you. Lord, there's a man, woman, boy, or girl in the sound of my voice that is not born again today. Help them to see the need to repent of sin, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Help them as well to receive the forgiveness of sin through Christ Jesus. Turn and look to Jesus. Embrace the fullness of salvation and be born again, for it's everlasting too late. For that Christian that's maybe wavering or lingering or wanting to bring someone else along, Lord, they may have to let them go that they can serve you in spite of others. Lord, I don't know what the needs are today, but you do. Holy Spirit, speak to me, through me, the word of God, that I may be a blessing and an encouragement. May I not be a stumbling block, Lord, but a stepping stone to you that others may see what they need in Christ and have it for their lives today. They may live a holy life. Life acceptable unto thee. Bless down the message and song. And Lord, we thank you for those that are here to hear your word. Change us. Help us be different than when we came in in Jesus' name. Bless Amen. Uh, to know that uh, the, the millions and billions of people on this planet, God knows your name. Yes, sir. And God cares for you. And God loves you. He said he knows the hairs are on your head. Even bald people like me. <laughs> You say, you don't have any here. I got spots where it goes, though. Amen. Amen. And uh, so he knows the spots where it goes. So yes. praise God. Well, uh, you know, if, if I seem a little passionate about this particular topic, it's because in the 22 years that I've been a Christian, I've had to serve God in spite of others. Yes, Not everybody's been on my bandwagon, sirs. Not everybody's encouraged me in this walk of faith, Brother White. Amen. Uh, I've had many relationships in my time, as you've seen through Sunday school, and not all wanted me to do what I'm doing for God. Amen. And uh, so it's a very important uh, topic to me uh, that I go on in spite of others. And by the way, it is for you too. Because not everybody's going to always support you in what you do for God. And guess what? Do for God you must do it regardless. 
And so this particular topic is, is really close to my heart. Uh, and uh, I've been saved for 22 years. And I can say I've had some obstacles along the way. I've had some good times. I've had some, uh, some bad times. Amen. Uh, but in spite of it all, I've had to continue on. Amen. And I praise God for my greatest fan, and that's my wife, Carmen. And uh, in, in spite of others and in spite of everybody else, she's been by my side. She's been my fan. Uh, when I've been criticized, when I've been put down, when I've been despised, when I've been uh, hit at and fought at, amen, uh, spit at and spat at, amen, she's been there. And I praise God that uh, I have a wife to stick by my side, amen. Uh, I'm glad she's not like Job's wife. Why don't you just curse God and die? I, you know, I, I might just have to do that, amen, you know, because I'd say, hey, what can I do without you, honey, amen. Joe's wife, just curse God and die, get it over with, amen. Be out your misery. She's always been there to encourage me and support me, and, you know, I, I trust that you've got somebody like that in your life. You, you need somebody like that in your life. Uh, in, in spite of what everybody else says, in spite of what everybody else does, they're right by your side. Whether it's a, a father, a mother, whether it's a son or a daughter, whether it's a wife or a husband, a relative, a friend, you need that person yes, sir, you do. that's going to be there in spite of others that's going to encourage you in the work of God. Because the devil's going to fight it. He's going to fight it, he's going to fight it, and he's going to fight it. Well, I've got three Bible characters we're going to look at this morning and try to bring out some things that they did for God and trust that we can do some of these same things. Uh, one of the first ones that we see here uh, is Abel. We're not going to look at Abel uh, at, at all today. We're going to save him for another time. But, but I'm sure that Abel had to do uh, his offerings and his sacrifices in spite of others, uh, namely his brother Cain. Hey, uh, if you got a brother or a sister here, they might not always be your greatest fan. Kayvon, they might not always be your fan when you take a stand for God. Your sisters may not always be your greatest fan when you take a stand for God. But yet still, you got to love them. And you got to go on, but uh, they may not always be there. First one we're going to look at is Enoch. Enoch, we're going to look at how he pleased God in spite of others. How Enoch pleased God in spite of others, because that's the crux of what we're looking at here. How can you, how can I, as a Christian in 2013, and all the things that are unforeseen, how can we, in spite of others, carry on by faith? Enoch pleased God in spite of others. Notice verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Enoch was translated. Translated means he was raptured, he was caught up, he was changed. That he should not see death and was not found. By the way, if he wasn't found, he had to go someplace. If he wasn't found, that means somebody must have been looking for him. And last time I checked, uh, people normally look for those that are bad, so you can stay away from them. And those that are good, so you can be around them. My Bible tells me that he was not found. Somebody evidently went looking for him because God had translated him. And it said, but before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So somebody that was looking for God must have went looking for him. And maybe the evildoers went looking for him too because the old sheriff is out of town, it seems. And so we got to make sure he ain't in town. Amen. And so he pleased God in spite of others. The Bible said he had a testimony. Others knew him for pleasing God. Let me ask you the question. Will you and can you please God in spite of others? Hey, young people, can you please God in spite of others? Hey, teenagers, can you please God in spite of others? With all the teen peer pressure to smoke, to drink, to have premarital sex, to get involved with things that you ought not to get involved with, to be involved in gangs and drugs and tattoos, can you please God in spite of others? Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. You say, well, preacher, we don't do any of those things, but I'm sure you're encouraged to. And I'm sure you're around those that do. I might have been saved for 22 years, but things were about the same when I was saved back in those days. Amen. There's always the, 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 the caving in pressure to do what everybody else is doing. But can you please God? He had a testimony that he pleased God. If we're going to please God, sometimes it will be in spite of others. Some will oppose your desire to please God. Enoch, the Bible says, walked with God. 
He walked with God. Hold your finger there and go over to Genesis chapter 5. We're going to be going back and forth to Genesis as well because that's where some of these characters are located. Genesis chapter 5. The Bible says Enoch, he pleased God. But over here in Genesis chapter 5, it said Enoch walked with God. And he had to walk with God in spite of others. Genesis chapter 5 verse 22, the Bible says, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Enoch pleased God in spite of others. Here it says Enoch walked with God in spite of others. Walking with God is obeying God's word or doing what he said to do. And when you do, it will often be in spite of others. The Bible says he did it for 300 years. Can you walk with God 300 years in spite of others? Some can't walk 300 minutes. That's right, Pastor. That's right. Let alone 300 years. Yeah, Pastor, that's good. Hey, we, we, preacher, you, you say in spite of others. You go down that chapter, you don't find anybody else walking with God. It says Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. You go down those numbers, you don't find anybody doing much for God, but it said Enoch walked for God. So obviously, if you go down the passage and he don't find anybody else walking with God, he must have done this alone. Yes, sir. In a godless society, he's walking for God. He has the testimony over there that he pleased God. You and I can please God in spite of others, let me tell you. If Enoch did it before he had a Bible... Yeah. Amen. Amen. You and I definitely can do it with the Bible and with the Holy Spirit of God in us. Amen. With God in us, we can please God. Amen. Amen. In spite of others. Y'all looking at me like, well, you know, will Enoch, will Enoch what? What, what you going to say? Did he have the Holy Spirit of God living in him? He didn't. No, what you going to say? He had a Bible? He didn't. What you going to say? He had godly parents that were living for God? The Bible doesn't say that either. The Bible doesn't say anything. It just says Enoch chose to walk with God. Amen. Out of the blue. That's good, Pastor. So evidently he listened to God. Yes, sir, he did. Many of the others didn't. Enoch pleased God in spite of others. How did he do it? He did it by walking with God in spite of others. He did it for 300 years. Not everyone wants you to walk with God. Why? It exposes their walk for the devil. Amen. Amen, Amen or oh me. When you live for God, it automatically exposes people that don't live for God. Now, I'm not doing this to embarrass anybody, but how many talk to somebody about Jesus this week? Raise your hand. Amen. It automatically exposes those that didn't. That's just a fact. Yes, sir. It's just a fact. I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I'm just making a point. Yes, sir. When you walk with God, it exposes those that don't walk with God. Amen. It's just a fact. Amen. Enoch walked with God. That's how he was able to please God and have that testimony that he pleased God because he walked with God in spite of others. Not only did he walk with God, he talked with God in spite of others. Come down with me to verse number 24. It says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. For God took him. Enoch talked with God in spite of others as well. Talking with God is speaking to him in prayer or praise, and it should be done daily. The Bible says this in Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? So how can Enoch walk with God and not talk with God? I've got to walk with God and talk with God if we're going to be agreed. Amos 3.3. 3. How can two walk together except they be agreed? He agreed with God. God agreed with him. They were agreeable. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Y'all follow me? Yes, so obviously as he walked with God, he talked with God in prayer and in praise. So he knew the mind of God to be able to please God. See how that goes together? Amen. Enoch pleased God. He had a testimony of pleasing God. Why? Because he walked with God. He talked with God. Enoch evidently agreed with God in a godless society in spite of others. He also agreed with God in a prayerless society because you don't find anybody else walking with God, agreeing with God, or talking with God in this passage of scripture verses. Amen. But it lists him out exactly. What am I saying? If we're going to please God in spite of others, we need to walk with God and talk with him and follow him. And oftentimes, it's going to be in spite of others. Amen. It's going to be in spite of others. I didn't say it was going to be easy. Did I leave that part out? Because we look at Enoch, we think it's going to be easy. How, how hard it must have been for him to stand when nobody else is standing. How many of y'all got relatives that aren't saved? You get around them, and uh, it's church time. 
and nobody else is going to church, but, but you know you need to get up and go to church? Amen. That's hard, ain't it? Yes, Especially when you have one of them, them family reunions, Kenny, Kenny, when they're having the barbecue on Sunday morning, and everybody going to the park to the picnic to have the barbecue, and they say, boy, why don't you come with us? Well, I'm going to church. Are we going to have church out there? I know what kind of church y'all going to have. Y'all going to have some, some butt dumber out there. Y'all going to have some, uh, some Coors uh, darkness out there and all these other kind of beers out there. I ain't, we ain't going over there. And, uh, and so it's hard. But if we're going to do it, the Bible says, if you walk in the light as he in the, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We need to walk with God and talk with him and follow him. Often it's going to be in spite of others, but our walk and our talk should please God. I want us to notice a, a classic Bible illustration of what happens when we concern ourselves with others in the realm of pleasing God. Go over to the Gospel of John. Because we're talking about how Enoch pleased God. The Gospel of John, chapter number 21, and, and the Gospel of John, chapter 21, we, we, we find the character in question named Peter. And this is a class, classic Bible illustration of what happens when we concern ourselves with others when we should be following Jesus. And, and uh, we're going to look at this briefly, but uh, let me set it up for you. Peter, he's denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. Uh, he, the Christ has been risen from the dead. Uh, he's reinstating uh, Peter now and recommissioning Peter. He's asked Peter to feed his sheep and to feed his lambs. And he's asked Peter if he loves him down in chapter 21, uh, verses 15 uh, through 22. And we kinda, we're going to pick it up in verse number 19. The Bible says, This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. Now, Jesus had just told uh, Peter, This is how you're going to die. And he said, uh, 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 This is what's going to happen. I want you to feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Now, let me illustrate to you what happened here. Uh, let me get Kayvon. Who else is out there? Uh, come here, Shane and Jeremiah. Because you've got the scene, the apostles are there. Jesus is there. <coughs> Peter is there. You're Peter, you just don't know it. <laughs> John is there. You're John, you just don't know it. <laughs> Guess who you get to be? Jesus. He <laughs> said, I may be small, but I can walk on water. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now here's the scene. Jesus had just asked Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, Lord, you know all things. And he just played his heart out there. And then at the conclusion of that, Jesus said, this is how you're going to die. And that's in verse number 19. But then when he finished that, he said, follow me. So in other words, Jesus said, I want you to come with me, Peter. So Peter begins to follow Jesus just a little bit. Now, of course, he spoke about following him in death and following him. But notice this. The Bible says, then Peter turning about. So obviously, he obeyed the command in verse 19 to follow Jesus. But then Peter said, whoa, 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 whoa. Peter turned about. And it says, see it the disciple whom Jesus loved. Of course, we know that's John, which also leaned on his breast at supper. We know it's John and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? It's John. Peter seeth him. Now, what have you effectively done in doing so? You have turned from following Jesus, Jesus. to look at others. Where's your power? Where's your source? Who should you be following? Why are you looking at him? Yeah. <laughs> well, at least he's honest, David, because I'm a sinner, amen? <laughs> now, you know what? Can you walk good backwards? Matter of fact, if you go walk backwards, you don't even know where Jesus is at. He can move over there. If you're backwards, where should your face be if you're following Jesus? At him. Now the Bible says this. He said, follow me. Peter turned about, seeth this disciple. Verse 21. Peter seeth him, saith Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Is he going to die the same way I'm going to die? Is the same thing going to happen to him? Does he need to feed the lamb? Does he need to feed the sheep? Now how are you going to please God in spite of others? By not being concerned about him. Notice what Jesus said. 
Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? You know what Jesus said? Mind your own business. Amen. Let me just put it down, break it down. He said, mind your business. He said, what if I have him do something totally opposite of what I told you to do? What business do you have of that? Follow thou me. Amen. So in other words, he said, focus on me. Let, let, let what's going to happen to him happen to him. Yeah. But let what's going to happen to you happen to you. But you just follow me. Amen. And notice that. The whole scenario in verse 19, Jesus said, follow me. Peter turned about as he began to follow. He sees this other disciple. He says, Lord, what are you going to have this man to do? Jesus said, don't worry about him. He said, if I will, then he tarry till I come. What's that to you? Follow thou me. Let me tell you how most Christians stop pleasing God. Yes. You're concerned about other people. Amen. You're just like Peter. When Jesus Amen. said, follow me, you're busy looking at somebody else, and they have nothing to do with your service for God. Amen. What you need to do is concern yourself with following the master, keeping your eyes on Jesus. If he says, follow me, follow him, he can't buy your way into heaven. He can't give you a piece of heaven. You don't have a piece of heaven to give. Amen. Now, in all fairness, it could be this. Yep. Earlier... The mother of James and John said, well, grant them to sit on the right hand and left hand of you when you come into your kingdom. Mm -hmm. So it could be, he said, well, well, well wait a minute, if I'm going to die this cruel, horrible death, he getting more than I'm getting. He gets to sit on the right hand or the left hand. Jesus said, well, what, what, and your point is? That's my favorite phrase to my children. And your point is? <laughs> what if I have him tarry till I come? What's that to you? Hear me now. How are you going to please God? Don't concern yourself with what other people think, Amen. what other people are doing. They have a total separate will apart from your will for the will of God. Their will for God may be totally different. What you need to do is consider what God wants you to do. Teenagers, let hear me up now. Don't be concerned about what the other teenagers in your school are doing. Concern yourself with what God wants you to do in your school. Good, Amen. 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 Y'all want something, don't you? <laughs> Jeremiah shaking his head. We want something. You know, follow me. Let me give y'all something here. Amen. Take something out of here. I appreciate that. Amen. Give these guys, yeah, these guys a hand. Amen. What am, what am I trying to do? Amen. Trying to illustrate the fact that you can't effectively follow Jesus if you're turning around looking at somebody else. You can't even walk straight because now you're walking sidestep. No, I don't, I've met very few people that can keep their body straight and walk a straight line while they're turning around looking at somebody else. Maybe you can. Maybe you're good like that. Amen. But most folks going to swerve this way. They're going to yeah swerve that way, and they're going to keep swerving, they're going to look back that way, and they're going to look back this way, and before long, you're all out there trying to look and see what somebody else is doing, and that's the average Christian person, concerned about somebody, husbands concerned about wives, wives concerned about husbands, children concerned about parents, parents concerned about children. Now, we should be as far as things are concerned, amen, but when it comes to the will of God, you ought not be. He said, follow thou me. What am I saying? Enoch pleased God in spite of others. He walked with God and he talked with God in spite of what everybody else was doing. His eyes needed to be fixed on Jesus. He needed to be focused on Jesus. He needed to follow Jesus to do the will of God. Jesus told him, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Enoch pleased God in spite of others. I'll give you the second character here. And so can you and I. Noah prepared an ark in spite of others. Hebrews chapter 11. Go back over there. Hebrews chapter 11. Noah prepared an ark in spite of others. Now, if anybody had odds against him, it was Noah. Noah had never seen rain, as far as we know. Now, maybe he did, but uh, I don't see it listed in the Bible. Notice Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Notice verse number 7. The Bible says this. It says, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What's that? The flood, the rain? But with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. So what did he do? He understood that God said there's going to be a flood. I, I'm going to uh, be uh, uh, reverentially afraid of that. I'm going to prepare this ark to save my house. It says, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Just by his mere obedience to the word of God and him going into the ark, he condemned everybody outside the ark. Did everybody have equal opportunity to get in that ark? Yes, they did. The Bible said he preached over 100 years, close to 120 years. He preached uh, these people and let them know what was coming. Uh, so people say, well, that's not fair. Well, if somebody tells you, you better run, the dog comes. Guess what? You better run. Amen. The dog bites you. It's not the dog's fault. Amen. 
Noah prepared an ark to, in spite of others. Noah had to prepare this ark against all odds. It hadn't rained yet. And I'm sure uh, he was ridiculed. He was probably railed on. He was labeled a fanatic and a fool amongst other things. When I got saved, folks said, you're a fool for believing that book. Uh, you're too radical. You're too fanatical. You've gone off the deep end. Nobody lives like that anymore. You know why? Very few people are walking for God. And so you're going to look like a fanatic. You're going to look like a fool because nobody else chooses to live the book. Let's just be honest. If you truly live like God said to live, you'd look like an oddball. Amen. That's true. That's true, Pastor. Ladies, if you truly live a modest life in your dress, you will look like an oddball. Because everybody else says, take it off. Hey, my motto is this. Boys, if you got to pull them up, they're too baggy. Girls, if you got to pull them down, they're too short. Amen. 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 Either or, if you got to pull them up, they're too baggy. If you got to pull them down, they're too short. Amen. Come on now. But if you dress that way, guess what? Boy, look at him. He looks like a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> that don't even stand nowadays. Some of the preachers sit up in the pulpit. They got to do, well, I ain't going to even go there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ain't gonna even go there, amen. amen. <laughs> Ain't gonna even go there, amen. Hey, what am I saying? In spite of others, he had to prepare this ark to save his house against ridicule, against being railed on, labeled a fanatic probably, amen. There's only eight people that got saved, him, his wife, and his three boys and their wives. Amen. 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 But in spite of others, he prepared this ark to the saving of his house. Go back to Genesis chapter 6 with me. Genesis, yeah, what am I saying? Sometimes you're going to do it in spite of others. Enoch pleased God in spite of others. How did he do it? He walked with God. He talked with God. Genesis chapter 6. And uh, notice Genesis chapter 6. Notice verse 14. The Bible says this. Uh, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and, and shalt pitch it within and without uh, with pitch. And he gives the dimensions and things like that down there. And then pick it up in verse 22. Thus did Noah, according to how much all that God commanded him, so did he. What happened? He prepared the ark which enabled him to save his household. But I'm sure he had to do it in spite of all the ridicule. But he did it. Say, preacher, what does building the ark have to do with us? I'm glad you asked. Amen. Because you and I may not be called upon, be called upon to build a physical ark at all. When last time God told one of y'all to build a physical ark? Uh, see, I rest my case. And so people think it has no relevance to your life, but it does. It does. We may not be called upon to build a physical ark like Noah did to save our families. However, we may be called upon to repair other types of arks of safety in spite of others for our family's sake and safety. Say, preacher, what are those arcs? First of all, God may have us prepare an ark of commands in spite of others. What am I talking about? We should prepare our children uh, an ark of commands for a moral compass to live by and to know what right and wrong is in the eyes of God. And you can start with the Ten Commandments. Amen. Say, preacher, why is it so important for them to know right and wrong in God's eyes? Because the world has a right and wrong. Yes, sir, they do, Pastor, they do. It's legally okay for, for people to marry in same sex. God says no. There are other things that the law says is okay. They say abortion is okay in some states. God says no. So I've got to have a moral standard, a moral compass, which is the word of God. Start with the Ten Commandments. I need to build an ark of safety for my children, an ark of commands in spite of others. Because mama may tell you don't do it. Daddy may tell you not to do it. Others may tell you not to do it. But it needs to be enforced at a minimum. Teach them the Ten Commandments. That's God that gives them something to stand by and something to live by. Say, preacher, what were the conditions like? I'm glad you asked. Go back to Genesis chapter 5, uh, 6, notice verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. You know what? No laws. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. I don't know about you, but that's bad. Every thought, it says, was only evil continually. The Bible says, it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. It grieved them at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Come down in verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There must have been somebody living right. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. He was living right and perfect. He's living right. And Noah walked with God. Sounds like Enoch to me. Amen. What am I saying? Noah, knowing the will of God, walking and talking with God, knew I've got to prepare an ark of safety for my children. 
He prepared the physical ark, but I believe he also had a spiritual ark of commands ready for his sons to be obedient in this wicked generation. I don't know about you, but if you don't have some laws for your children in this wicked generation, they will go wicked. It's already in them. All of sin that comes short of glory, it's already in them. You've got to do something to bring them up above that. And the only thing above that is the law of God. So Noah, I believe one of the things that we can do is prepare an ark of commands in spite of others. In spite of what others are saying, our children need rules and principles of the word of God for their safety and the safety of others. Why do you think all these shootings happen? Your child needs safety, but other people need safety too. Why do you think thou shalt not kill is there? That's for somebody else's good. Why do you think thou shalt not commit adultery is there? That's for somebody else's good. Why do you think thou shalt not uh, steal is there? That's for somebody else's good. Uh, honor thy father and thy mother. That's somebody else's good, but it in turn helps you. Why? Safety and the safety of others. You look at the command. They're there for a reason, but we live in a godless and a prayerless and a, a, a society that doesn't want any rules, any guidelines, any regulations. They want to throw it all off. Amen. And every man do that which is right in their own eyes. My friend, I tell you, we're destined for trouble. Yes, sir, we are. We're headed for it already. Yes, and uh, they're talking about all these gun laws and we ought to do this and do this. Last time I checked, no gun pulled its own trigger. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. What people need is a good dose of Jesus. Yes. What they need is to be born again. What they need is to be saved. What they need is to hear from God. They need to walk with God and talk with God. Cain killed his brother because his heart was wicked. He pulled the trigger. Guns aren't the problem. Now, I agree some of these guns they ought not to have on the streets in the first place, but it's not the gun's fault. I mean, you should be able to have a, uh, anything around here, and if a person's heart's right, they're not going to use it in the wrong way. Amen. I'm not being political. I'm just saying, you know, it's, hey, let's get off of that anyway. Amen. Amen. <laughs> prepare an ark of commands in spite of others. You know, uh, we're going to have to prepare the ark of commands and have our children inside the house of regulations and guidelines and rules. Yes, I said rules. Yes, sir, Pastor. Well, they're going to rebel against the rules, not if they're given right. Yes, Pastor. Amen. They're for safety. In spite of what others say, people want to listen to all these other uh, authorities out there on raising children. Let's just listen to God. Prepare an ark of commands in spite of others. But something else I believe we need to prepare for them is an ark of counsel and communication in spite of others. If we're going to give these commands like the Ten Commandments and other commands of God, we need to counsel them and communicate to them what they mean, how they apply, and how they're broken. Give you a good illustration. We sat down the other day and I'm working with my children with the, uh, the commandments. And uh, we went through several of them, and uh, we got to uh, thou shalt not covet. And I said, Joshua, what does thou shalt not covet mean? He said, uh, I don't know. We, you can't expect them to know what it means if you don't communicate it to them. You can't expect them to know how it applies if you don't counsel with them. You can't expect to just bark out commands and expect them to obey it when you gave them no counsel nor communication. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm just being honest with you. A lot of things were thrown at me as a child, and they expected me to obey it, and they expected me to understand it, and I didn't have a clue. And then when it came to breaking them, then I got disciplined because I didn't even know what it was. But what it takes is an arc of commands, but with those commands, it takes counsel and communication to know what they mean, how they apply, how they're broken, and then you can communicate the penalty and the pardon and that it was paid in Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, but if they don't understand there's a penalty, there's a pardon in Christ, and they don't understand the commands, if you don't communicate it, if you don't counsel, woe is you. Yes, sir, Pastor. Amen. What am I saying? Prepare an ark of commands. Prepare an ark of counsel and communication. How are we going to do that, preacher? Daily rehearsing them, daily relaying them, and daily reciting them, and letting them know what they mean. Then this last point under this we need the most of all. As I'm preparing an ark of commands in spite of others and preparing uh, an ark of counsel and communication in spite of others to talk to my children about the commands, how they apply, what they mean, how they're broken, communicate the penalty and the pardon that's paid in Christ, I need to do that with caressing and confirming in spite of others. Amen. Well, I mean, i got to love my children. I can't just expect to discipline them and don't love them. Now, I don't know about your children, but when I discipline my children, and I've, I've got them over here and they're standing there or I'm standing here or whatever. After I'm done with the discipline, they are ready to do like this. They want a hug. 
What is that? They want confirming that you still love them. I don't know about you, but I didn't get that as a child. I, I, I knew I was loved, but after the discipline was done, I didn't get the hugs like that. I got them sometimes. But just the very fact that after you communicate with them and you counsel with them, let them know these commands are there for their good, they need to be confirmed that you love them. And they need to be hugged and held. Let them know, hey, I love you. I had to deal with you, I had to discipline you, but I love you and that's why I'm doing it. They may not understand it, but they need to be caressed and confirmed that you love them. Take time to caress our children and confirm your love to them as you counsel them. And as you communicate to them the commands of God, that's an art that we need to have and it needs to be done in love. This uh, loveless and this selfish and self-centered, computer, fast-paced society, we've got to take time for love. It's gone out the window. They can't get it on the chat rooms. They can't get it on the computer. They can't get it texting somebody. They can't get it on the iPads. They can only get it from a parent. Yes. If you don't give it to them, they'll get it the wrong way someplace else. Somebody will caress them. Somebody else will confirm them. Somebody else will communicate with them. Somebody else will counsel them. And they will follow it. They will. And you will be the sad recipient of saying, what happened to my child? You didn't provide an ark of safety to the saving of your house. Amen. Well, Noah prepared an ark in spite of others. When nobody else wanted to live for God, when everybody else's imaginations were evil continually, Noah made sure that his family was taken care of. And I believe we need to prepare an ark of commands in spite of others. Prepare an ark of counsel and communication in spite of others. And then we need to prepare an ark of caressing and confirming for our children. But then lastly, go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Not only did Enoch please God in spite of others, Noah prepared an ark in spite of others. Lastly, we see Abraham. Abraham went out to a place in spite of others. He went out to a place in spite of others. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 says, By faith... Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. I'm sure Abraham's family, his friends and foes alike probably all thought he was mad going out of his mind. Going out to a place not knowing where he was going, not knowing anything about it, but went out to a place in spite of others, he did. Go with me to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Told you it was going to be going back and forth. I know why sometimes you think husbands don't know where we're going. He's lost. He's not. You never lost as long as you got some gas in the car, amen. He doesn't know where he's going. Sarah might have thought the same thing. Abraham, where are we going? Don't know. When are we going to get there? Don't know. What did God say? He said he'd show me when we got there. He said, he showed me after we leave. Well, that's real comforting. <laughs> Chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred, but he said, in spite of others. And from thy father's house, in spite of others. Unto a land that I will show thee in spite of others. He said, but you know what, Noah, uh, Abraham, when you get there, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. He said, when you get there, verse 3, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all things of the earth be blessed. And so with that, Abraham departed, hallelujah, and praise God. In spite of others, he said, you know what, I'm going with God's promise. God said he's going to bless me. He's going to bless those that curse me. He said, I'm just going out for God. What am I saying here? No, Abraham went out to a place in spite of others, in spite of everybody and everything he knew. He went out, and you may be called to a place today or this week as well. Maybe today. Maybe this year. Will you go? You may be called to go out to a place. Last week we talked about being uh, going without counsel to a place of employment or a place of engagement. You may have to go in spite of others to that place of employment or engagement with counsel. But just be sure God has called you to go out. Just be sure. Give you three quick things here that 
we need to do in spite of others. Go back to Hebrews chapter 11, keeping y'all awake. Hebrews chapter 11. Told you we'd be going back and forth, amen. Why? Because most of these characters are found in Genesis that we're looking at. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 17. You may be called to a place of sacrifice in spite of others. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 17. Notice what the Bible says there. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able. Notice that. God was able. Say it with me. God was able. Say it again. God was able. Say it again. God was able to raise him up. You've got to believe that he is. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God says here, uh, Noah or uh, Abraham uh, uh, believed that he was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. You may be called to go to a place of sacrifice. God may call you to go to a place and give up something you love like he did with Abraham and Isaac. Will you go? In spite of others. Hey, I came to Tucson in spite of others. I came to Tucson in spite of myself. I was my biggest other enemy. I didn't want to come. God had to give me orders, Devin. And when I got here, guess what I was trying to do? Find orders back over to Belgium. Why? In spite of others. I was the biggest other that didn't want to be here. But God said, you know, in spite of yourself, I'm still going to get you to where I want you to be. Why well, was a sacrifice? But guess what? You never sacrifice anything for God that he doesn't replace a hundred, two hundred fold. I wouldn't give up Tucson for the world. I wouldn't give it up for anything. The things that God has showed me and done for me here, he's given me a church family, he's given me a church building, he's given me a son, he's given me another son, he's given me a daughter, he's given me a deacon, he gave me another deacon, given me an assistant, given me great men of God here, he's given me everything and then some. And I almost didn't want to come to this place. What am I saying? You may be called to a place of sacrifice in spite of others. Will you go? You may be called to a place of service in spite of others. God may call you to do something that others don't understand or go and serve someplace where others don't want you to go. Will you go? And then last of all, maybe God's calling you to a place of salvation in spite of others. You know, God may be calling you to a place of being born again. You can't be like Peter. You can't worry about what others may think, what others may say. Notice verse 31. If Rahab had wondered and thought about what other people were going to think about her up there in Jericho, she would have never done verse 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. If she'd have thought about what everybody else in Jericho was thinking before the walls fell down, what are my family going to think? What are my friends going to think? By the way, you read the account, she had many of her family members there with her. Amen. Somebody believed her. She had people there with her. They got saved too because she got saved because she believed God. Just imagine for a moment if she thought, well, I'm not going to trust that Hebrews God over there. The Bible says down there, by faith, the harlot perished not with everybody else that did perish. You may be called to a place of salvation today. Guess what? I don't know about you. I got saved 22 years ago this Amen. day. Probably about in Belgium time, about two and a half hours from now. And one of the first things I thought, what are people going to think if I walk that aisle and go and talk to that preacher? I'm just being honest with you. In my heart of hearts, he said, I want your heads bowed and your eyes closed. No one looking around. I said, if I go down that aisle and go to that preacher, what are people going to think about me? Amen, Pastor. They're going to think I'm some big sinner. Let me put us on equal plane. Yes, sir. All have sinned to come short of the glory of God. That's a ploy of Satan who wants to trick your mind to make you think there's somebody in here holier than thou. It's not about that. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about your sins have separated between you and your God. Let me change that. He's not your God yet. He wants to be your God. And those commandments that we talked about, all of us have broken them at some point in time. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or bow down to them. Most of us have something that's a God to us. Say, preacher, what constitutes a God? That which you spend the most of your time with. 
Whatever you spend the most of your time with is your God. And my friend, let me tell you that most of us have broken that command. Bowing down to images. You bow down to the iPad, chat rooms, TVs, sports. You put all that before God. I'm just being honest with you. So you see we're already off to a bad start. We're just on the second commandment. We haven't even gotten to honor thy father and thy mother. Taking the Lord's name in vain. There you go. Remember the Sabbath day, keeping it holy. You say, preacher, that's Saturday. What about the Lord's day? That's right, Pastor. Where are you going to be back tonight? Ooh, I'm Super Bowl zone, preacher. We got a super God. And he's giving you super VCRs. And you got super TiVo. You can, most of y'all can play that stuff back. Only a few of us still have VCRs like me, Brother Serge. I'm going to tape it on the VHS. Watch it when I get home. Amen. Chicago ain't in no way, so I don't care. Amen. What am I saying? We have all these things before us. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. He said if you could look at a woman with lust, you've committed already. Thou shalt not bear false witness. We got Joshua on that. I said, Joshua, what does that mean? He said, I don't know. I said, it means to lie. Yeah. And that's what you did. He took faith cookie and ate it yesterday. Oh, no. And I said, who took the cookie? Faith said, I didn't eat my cookie. I did, G2, I didn't eat it. Joshua, did you eat the cookie? And I just looked at it. <laughs> Since when did you have those powers that you can just look at it and it disappears? <laughs> I said, Joshua, did you eat the cookie? Then he, oh, yeah, I did. I said, Joshua, you, thou should not steal. Thou should not bear false witness. Thou should not covet. He said, well, what is covet? I said, to want something that's there and to want to take it. I said, you then broke three commandments already, not to mention honor thy father and thy mother, because I told you still and ain't right. I said, you're in bad shape, buddy. <laughs> ain't but ten commandments, you didn't violate four. <laughs> what am I saying? If we start to list the commands, we will see that we're all equal. And all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Don't let the devil keep you from getting saved today. Eat not please God in spite of others. Noah prepared the ark in spite of others. Abraham went out to a place in spite of others. All three did something when nobody else was doing it. You know, today, nobody else may get saved, but God may want to save you. February 3rd, 1991, only two people got saved in that church. Me and my wife. Say, preacher, did you walk the aisle? No, I didn't walk the aisle, but as soon as the last amen was said, I made a beeline up to the preacher and I say, look, we need to talk. Hey. And I got saved that day. You know what? In spite of others, I said, I'm getting saved. In spite of what I think, I'm getting saved. In spite of your baptisms, get saved. In spite of your tongue speaking, get saved. In spite of all the, the things that you think are salvation, why don't you just let us take a Bible and show you what true being born again is? And you'll leave here excited that you did. I'm 22 years old in Christ, and I've never, ever gotten over being saved. Never, ever gotten over being born again. Hey, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's do for God in spite of what others say. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Father, thank you for your goodness. Oh, God, help us to live the way we need to live. God, we can't live at all without being born again. The Bible is clear. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man. Oh, Lord, by the Spirit's power, prick our hearts. Help us to see that we can live by faith in the unforeseen 2013 in spite of others. No one may go with us. It may be in spite of others, but God, help us to see what we need. We've got to understand in my voice, there may be a young person, maybe an older person that's never been born again. They need to be saved today. Help them, Lord, to trust you in spite of others. Help them to walk the aisle and take my hand and say, I must be saved. I want to be saved. Lord, help that man, that woman, boy or girl that's struggling with their faith and their, their walk with Christ and help them to recognize they can walk and talk with you and please you like Enoch did. 
Let that couple know that they can prepare an ark to the saving of their children's souls by having commands and counsel and communication and caressing and confirming them. Help that man, woman, boy, or girl, or couple that's afraid to step out and go to that place that you'd have them to go, whether it's a place of sacrifice, service, or salvation, and help them to make a decision for Christ today. Lord, many other needs in this place meet each need and work in the hearts. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around, how many would be honest with me today and say, Preacher, I'm like you were 22 years ago. If I died right now, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven, but I'm concerned about it. Would you please pray for me? And honestly, before God, you'd raise your hand and say, I I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven, but I'm concerned about it. Man, woman, boy, or girl, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You'd raise your hand up nice and high where I can see it. I'll acknowledge it and you can put it right back down. Man, woman, boy, or girl, all around us. I'm not talking about your baptism. I'm talk not talking about speaking tongues or paying tithes. I'm talking about being born again, being saved, being rescued. And you'd raise that hand and say, preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Well, you know, the next question, I don't even have to ask for a show of hands. But I will. How many would say, preacher, pray for me. I, I need to live for God in spite of others. And you'd raise that hand and say, pray for me. I know I shouldn't have to ask that, but maybe somebody's got a special need today. But help me to live in spite of others. Amen. 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 You may put them down. Father, you see the hands that have been raised, many, wanting to live for others, or live for you in spite of others. And God, I pray that you would help them to live just like Enoch did, just like Abraham did just like Noah did, but more importantly, God helped them to follow Jesus. Not like Peter did in turning about, but keeping their eyes fixed on you, looking unto Jesus, the author and fin finisher of our faith. God help that man, woman, boy, or girl, those that raised their hands saying they desire to live for Jesus. God help them to get on the path of righteousness, to walk with the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help them not to waver, help them not to look back, and if they fall, if they falter, Lord, pick them back up, strengthen them, and allow them, and enable them to continue walking for God, talking with you, Lord, repenting of their sins, confessing to you, and help them to carry on in spite of others in the unforeseen 2013. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do. Save that one man or woman, boy or girl, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Our heads still are bowed, eyes are closed. And as Andrea plays a hymn of invitation... Maybe God spoke in your heart. Maybe you need to come to an old-fashioned altar. Maybe you need to say, God, I want to please you like Enoch did. I want to walk more with you. I want to talk more with you. Or maybe you say, you know, I, I need to prepare an ark in spite of others for my children. Work on the commands more. Work on the counsel and the communication more. Work on the caressing and conforming more with my kids. Confirming to them. Maybe you say, you know, I, I just need to go out to a place in spite of others place of sacrifice, place of service. Maybe you just need to be saved today. Where are you at today? I, I don't know, but let God speak to your heart. Let God speak to your heart. Hey, you're amongst people that love you and care for you. If you need to be born again, please don't put it off. Please don't walk out of this church without being born again today. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. In spite of others. Hey, teenager, will you live in spite of others? Will you walk in spite of others? Will you talk in spite of others? Parents, will you have the commands in spite of others? Will you have the counsel and the communication in spite of others? Will you caress and confirm to your children in spite of others? Dealing with your love for them. Will you go out to that place of sacrifice and service in spite of others? And will you be saved in spite of others? Not everybody wants to live for God. Not everybody wants to please God, but you do. You do. We've seen that it can be done. These three stuck out. Four of you count in Abel. And you can do it. Oh, would you be saved today? Would you like to be born again? We can take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. But oh, don't put it off. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. The world behind me, the cross before me. World behind me, the cross before me. 
You know, Jason Carpenter will be with us tonight. That's what he's done. He's put the world behind him and the cross before him. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your glory. Oh, God, help us to look at these three individuals, four if we count Abel, to see the things that they did, and Lord, to recognize and realize you would have us to please you. You would have us to prepare certain types of arcs in our life, to recognize and realize, Lord, you may have us go out to a place, and you're going to have us do it all in spite of others. And Lord, may we do it in the boldness and the fullness and the confidence of the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God, trusting you to meet our needs.